It's constricting. It doesn't leave. Unfortunately, sometimes people who like to control things go a little out of their way to make sure they can control that thing. There's gotta be something else. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like a detective right now. I'm looking through the footage. You can't stop me. Just gonna end like that. Hello Internet, it is I, the Roshi, and I'm back with another reaction. This time, working on those Genshin Impact version 2 trailers, starting from 2.0, going all the way to 2.8. So I'm excited to see what these are about. Let's get into it. Mondstadt is the city of freedom, and Liyue is the city of contracts. As for Inazuma, it's known as the Nation of Eternity. The Almighty Shogun. Focused exclusively on our single goal of implementing Eternity. I know of a way to introduce you to the Raiden Shogun. But before that, there is one other place I was hoping you both would accompany me to. When a person's ambition reaches a certain strength, the gods look upon them with favor. In other words, a person's vision represents their ambition. It must be a possession, right? I see. That reminds me. It seems that his vision was recently confiscated. It's just like that feeling of emptiness. The feeling that something is... missing. For to be stripped of one's vision is to be stripped of one's... ambition. As one who is thrown into the sea, though he fights back desperately against his predicament, it does nothing to prevent his descent into the depths. Intuition was correct. The wind that blows from afar carries fresh life to these shores. Perhaps in the eyes of a deity such as the Almighty Shogun, the lives of those who inhabit the world are inconsequential. At present in Inazuma, in the name of the Vision Hunt Decree, the people's aspirations are being senselessly trampled underfoot. Thus, we cannot remain indifferent to this situation without also remaining indifferent to our own fate. Now, it is time for me to honor my word! I await your instruction. Forget that challenging the vision hunt decree is tantamount to challenging a deity. When you are ready, go to Hanamizaka and look for a fireworks shop run by the Naganohara family. There, you will find someone who can help you. Allow me to introduce myself. A fifth of reprise! I'm Yuimiya. <laughs> Great to meet ya. Sangonomiya on Watatsumi Island to form a resistance group. Remove all threats to eternity by order of the Almighty Shogun! Adopted daughter of the Kudra clan of the Terio Commission. She's also a general in the Shogun's army. The resistance never betrays its own. A ceremony, you say? Why would such a task be left to the Tenryo Commission? The wait is over, my comrade. On this statue. All right, so this is an introduction for Inazuma from previous trailers that I've seen, and this one, of course, too. Inazuma is very much Japan inspired. It's actually pretty cool how it looks very traditional Japan. I live in Japan, so maybe it just speaks to me in a certain way. 
We have Ayaka here, and we also have Yoimiya, which I think is very cool how you have Ayaka, this character who is noble. She's trying to keep on top of stuff. However, she's still telling you to like, I have this friend, reach out to them. They can help you too. And it's Yoimiya, who is a literal firecracker of a person. So I just like the idea that those two have some kind of connection with so very different personalities. Ayaka being more subdued, while Yoimiya is a little more on the go with the flow and the wilder side. I really like the colors for their designs as well, where Ayaka is in mostly blues. And in this case, blue is a very royal color. It's used to symbolize knowledge. It's also used to symbolize calm and like put together. And then we have Yoimiya, who has much brighter colors, such as reds, oranges, and yellows, which are very energetic colors, colors that attract a lot of attention. You also have Ayaka in more traditional garments uh, and armor, and Yoimiya is wearing less clothing, body wraps, and still coverage that allows for more mobility and being more flexible in general. She's an archer, she's jumping, spinning, twirling around the battlefield, shooting off her arrows. And then you have Ayaka who masters a sword and that requires a lot of technique. They both require technique, but Yoimiya just has a more speedy, all over the field kind of approach, while I get the feeling that Ayaka is more tactical. Yoimiya comes at you so much that you're overwhelmed. Meanwhile, Ayaka is just three steps ahead with what she's about to do. I really like Miko. There's something mysterious about her. I love the attitude that she has, but that she's also wise as well, yet still a troublemaker. The wind that blows from afar carries fresh life to these shores. So that line there, I'm assuming she is talking about the Traveler, starting from Mondstadt and making their way to Inazuma. But I learned in the comments that the Traveler is able to switch their element and I think we got a hint of that here when it showed the light changing from its yellow to a, to a purple, which would be the electric one. Raiden Shogun, for some reason, because of the eternity thing, which I'm gonna be trying my best to understand as we go through this, is removing people's visions. Maybe because she feels like they're not worthy. It seems like she can also grant people visions. So maybe the prior Archon gave people visions. And now this one is very spiteful for reasons. And is like, no, people shouldn't have these powers. Make a note of this. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. Fuck you. Fuck you. Give me that. That's mine. You don't have it. You don't deserve it. And maybe this resistance, this, this Watatsu, uh, but the, the Watatsumi Island formed an alliance with Kokomi, pretty much standing their ground. Kujo Sara, who works underneath the Raiden Shogun, trying to force people to follow the will of the Raiden Shogun. She is the Archon after all. We must simp for Raiden. And then you have Kokomi like, nah, let people be free. So they're kind of at odd ends with each other. That's interesting. And you gotta sort this out and create some kind of alliance between the two or something because I don't know how you're gonna have Kokomi and Raiden on your team at the same time if you uh don't make them eventually get along this is also a very nice image hold on i i'm doing this wrong i need i need to be like other other reactors hold on a second hold on hold on i'm just gonna i'm shaking off my glasses to be a different person real quick hold on hold on booba all right i'm back booba visually this is stunning though um there i th i think things all these trailers that specifically, I mean, all these trailers and teasers are great, but ones that specifically have Raiden in them in some way, go hard with their visual effects. Look, you got that eternity eye symbol flying around in the background, all this electrical energy. Oh, I'm just gonna watch this. Yeah, I mean, that's so freaking cool. Yeah, yeah. You will be inlaid upon this statue. Okay, and then this text here, Euthymia, 
that a word I should know, or is that like an in Genshin word? Thymia is a normal, tranquil mental state or mood, and those with bipolar disorder, euthymia is a stable mental state or mood that is neither manic nor d depressive, yet distinguishable from the state of healthy people. Raiden being the immovable god, you know, she's not going anywhere, and this is her order. Visions are too chaotic just for people to have. Remove them and things will be stable and it will remain that way forever, I guess. But yeah, it seems that being granted a vision, having a vision, it's like a power boost. It, be, it becomes part of you and, and what you are. They're just being removed from people. They feel empty. They feel like something's missing. They're, they're just like in a state of like, what, do, what? What's, what do I what do I even do anymore? So that can't feel too good. At the same time, I can totally understand if Raiden's plan is to remove all these visions to have better control over things. Sometimes people who like to control things go a little out of their way to make sure they can control that thing. But Raiden here, being a god who does have this kind of power, who can kind of control this to an extent, wh why not try? right so i get where she's coming from as well at least where she's coming from as far as what i'm gathering from this trailer but yeah this was all really cool stuff on to the next one repeat after me three two one one two three <sighs> You know, the earliest shrine on Watatsumi Island was not located in Sangonomiya. But after she struck down our protector deity, the shrine was abandoned. Recently, some of our soldiers started showing symptoms of accelerated aging. Ooh. If that's the case, then the peace talks are likely a trap. People charge in here as they please. So uncivilized. Senor is the one behind all this? Ugh, not her again! Have you learned your lesson now? The way you follow me around like a dark shadow. <laughs> not even ashes will remain! Let's get them! Protect Madame Cujo! I will do everything within my power to defend my family's honor. Strike! Storm the front! You Kujo scum! Colluding with the Fatui isn't low enough for you already! You just want to take everything away from us! To survive hardship, you must prepare for hardship. Ambitions have the power to heal wounds, to bring victory. <laughs> Indulge my curiosity. What is the reason that I find you standing here before me once again? Shine down! Now you shall perish! You don't think your ambition alone is enough to shake A's will, do you? That's it. Just like that. Eternity stretches things out over a long time. But each moment within it becomes all the more fragile. <laughs> you know? Did you happen to see how the city looked on the way over here? Everyone's getting ready for the Moon Chase Festival! I'm taking part in this year's Masterful Chefs. If possible, I'd like you to be my culinary consultants. There is one dish that perhaps you could try making for me. 
We have two extraordinary talents this year. I'm interested to see their choice of dishes. Okay, without further ado, let the cooking commence. Begin. This one, another banger. More conflict between Kujo Sara and Kokomi. And it turns out that Kujo Sara has allied with the Fatui, which is very interesting. So for those who know, and for those who don't know, I did a reaction to a fan-made song called Epoch Winter, Tales of the Fatui. And this is Senora, which I believe that song was about. I didn't know that at the time when I was looking into it, but after seeing some of the imagery and what people have said in the comments, I'm kind of putting two and two together. She looking like a moth. That's okay. I'm guessing you definitely fight her, but it's cool that we actually kind of see her introduced and it seems like we know who she is already. Also, we have Wanderer being a little villainous, a little villainous here. And I kind of like that because when we watched his other stuff, such as the character demo, he was defending himself because he was about to get mugged by some by some thugs. Uh, he went a little overboard. He went a little harder than he probably should have. But when he was attacking them, there was like a little twisted sense of joy in what he was doing. Whether or not he was a bad guy at the time, and I'm using that term very loosely with him, there was a little bit of uneasiness coming through his actions and how it was portraying him with like the glitchy effect and it, it kind of seemed that there is a little bit of an unstable nature with him whether or not in the future he moves past these things is one thing but it's interesting just to see how some things just linger also in his teaser there's a lot of backstory going on there and boy is it traumatic you know, that that affects people. Sure, you might have some people who try to find peace, like Zhao, right? He's he's he has trauma, he's angsty, but he still tries to have these peaceful moments, it seems. Wanderer here seems to be on the other side where so much shit happened that instead of being able to find some kind of outlet to deal with it, he didn't have that chance. And by the time he is free, he's all sorts of messed up doing his own thing. I don't know if he's working for anyone here, if it's with the Fatui at this point or someone else, or maybe he is acting on his own because he's free at this point and he's just like, screw everybody. People suck, you know? I'm not exactly sure, and that's okay because, man, it's gonna be exciting to find out. Also, just like the, the little fight choreography that they showed in here, really cool. Like, boy, that fight with Raiden must be freaking intense. And this here, we got our boy Kazuha going up against Raiden. That's pretty sick. I wanna see that fight. He, he looked like he struggled a little bit though, which, you know, we don't normally see Kazuha struggle too much. But I get it. You also have this statue, which is where uh, visions are being collected. I, I believe these are some of the confiscated visions, maybe? Um, it's kind of linking back to when I saw uh, Ito's character demo. Was he trying to get his vision back or something and it was here? I'm not exactly sure what the significance of this statue is, other than there's visions on it. And I believe these are like, are like capsules to hold people's like elemental powers and Raiden's been collecting them taking them away from people I figured there'd be a lot more of them unless if these are just very strong visions and this is kind of acting like a prison of sorts or it's being put on display in a way back then when you have like armies like fighting each other and stuff did you take the enemy's head and put it on a freaking pike and put it out in your front lawn and be like you come here this is what happens to you so maybe this is kind of like a warning where it's like hey we got these visions you can't have them you step to us and uh your shit's gonna be up here too maybe that's what that's about but they're being activated right now here. And I'm not sure if that has something to do with the traveler's power being within proximity of it, or 
is Raiden herself getting stronger by collecting the visions and these are kind of amplifying her own energy? Or do they just activate when other people with visions are near? I mean, it's pretty cool either way. Also, this end bit here was was pretty neat, uh, showing that there's like an event in Liwe again, um, and it's cooking themed, and we got our we got our chef right there, so that's pretty cool. Nice, nice wholesome events. Y you gotta have some of those when there's all this other chaos going on, right? Surely you don't think your ambition alone is enough to shake A's will, do you? So here it's interesting how Miko is not necessarily on your side, but she's not against you either. And if she is against you, then at the same time, she doesn't feel the need to actually do anything. She's just proposing a question like, you're going up against a god, you think you have a chance? I don't have to do anything, bro. You're gonna find out. That's what this is. Miko right now is going up to the Traveler and she's just like, hey, fuck around and find out, right? That's what's happening right now. It's, God, I love it. <laughs> I need to get water. Where were we? As soon as the melody began, my mind began to drift, and I could hear the sound of someone playing along with me. Come, try it for yourself. It's all yours. sense of monsters, the aroma of battle. I don't care how strong they are, they'll be ashes when I'm finished with them. Please, allow me to assist you in battle with Shikifuda and Onmyodo. Ah, the monsters here are strong. Fierce fighting awaits us. It would appear that this place is some sort of combat training ground. There's nothing but fighting and slaughter to be had here. Now that we're all here, what do you say we get to the bottom of this? Where are we headed this time? Don't get too close! Here's Becca! So this was a shorter one, which is fine. Uh, it seems like they introduced a training grounds of sorts. Uh, maybe you go there, do some challenges, you, you practice your combos, things like that. You have um, Tartaglia here and um, yeah, and some other characters that we haven't seen in quite a bit. They're also introducing Toma which is nice, protect her from afar. And that, I think that answers the question that I was about to have, where, or not really a question, but an observation. I don't know if I talked about it before, but you know, he, he yells things out such as here's backup, his element is fire, but also he seems to have like these, these bubbles, these shields around him with these this fire symbolic uh, plating that appears and, and probably like rotates around him. So I guess he's very much a uh, 
support or like a defense or buff build this little guy is interesting i imagine this is like the the npc to this training grounds place i wonder if there's any quests connected to this little this little character like what exactly are they here's a better shot of them yeah it almost looks like a paper doll oh yeah i have to check this out how dare they how dare they introduce this very mysterious setting and then give no context to anything like there's just like what does this mean maybe you guys who play the game are like oh this place for me i got nothing other than it's dark it's dreary and that we saw flashes of images there's this tree this this tree gotta mean something am i gonna not and am i not gonna be able to hold on let's see Oh, nope, I'm going back. Hold on. Can I can I do this? Aha, I'm going frame by frame, you son of a I got you now. I got you now. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm 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 like a detective right now. I'm looking through the footage. You can't stop me. Okay, looks like we got some some cave action here. There's a figure down here in the corner. This looks like some kind of some like some ruins or like an entrance. Or, or an exit to a place. This guy, we've seen this guy in the other version trailer. Don't know what his deal is, but the fact that we're seeing him a couple times now, uh, maybe, maybe that's something. This is a flashback, there's candles. I feel like this is some kind of uh, memorial or gravesite even. One, because he doesn't look too happy. There's all these lit candles behind him. The fact that there's a dark tone in general anyway, maybe it's associated with uh, with death or or it could be for ritualistic purposes. There's a lot of holidays in the East that are for remembering those who passed on, such as Obon in Japan. I wonder if it has anything to do with that. Okay, yeah, we have another shot of that. Ooh, okay. Is that Little Wanderer? Are you Little Wanderer? I almost want to go back to the teaser just to see if like anything matches. That might be Wanderer. Okay, some some people discussing stuff. We have a meeting of sorts, a feather, and then the tree. The tree with no leaves. This tree looks dead, but this tree's gone through the ringer. And then it comes back and we see the tree again and it's all lit up and alive. Well, considering that we saw Wanderer in the last version trailer as appearing to be like an antagonist, maybe after that encounter with him, this is like a hint to like check out this area and, uh, you know, do some investigating and maybe you find some origins of who Wanderer used to be. That's my theory right now. And it seems like whatever deal happened whatever went down didn't go so well and it led to the events that caused um wander all sorts of trauma i felt like that was a prologue to the events that we saw in wanderer's teaser if it's not wanderer i'm going to appear really stupid i hope i'm not terribly wrong <laughs> Oh, God. I know that sometimes you guys praise me for my connections, but, and, you know, that feels great. I'm gonna be honest with you. That, that's the huge, you know, huge ego boost. But in the moment, boy, does it make me nervous. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on. With this newfound strength, I will defend those who fight alongside me. Protecting my soldiers doesn't just mean having a robust defense in place. It means going on the attack. Oh, the key cool. to seizing victory in battle lies in remembering the meaning of battle and employing the right tactics to generate momentum. Pull it! Keep your weapon at the ready. You never know what's around the corner. And Oni. The Tenryo Commission recently issued an arrest warrant. Arataki Ito. We've been trying to apprehend him recently. 
Transcendent and Miraculous are not the only things to which human beings aspire. They pursue the everyday, the ordinary, to a far greater extent than I would have ever imagined. This mountain we stand on is a cradle of life's profoundest mysteries, a vast and terrifying hotbed of possibilities. People are put off by the cold and don't realize that there is much to explore beneath the icy exterior. Are you here to build a snowman too? Let's combine our forces and build ourselves a huge snowman! It'll be a ton of fun! What's on your mind? You seem a little distracted. Some of my alchemy notes are missing. We do not yet know the identity of our thief. Please take care. Dragonspine has become more dangerous than it used to be. Uh. Huh? Oh no! Avalanche! Albedo. What the devil do you think you were doing? Okay. Okay, so there's quite a little bit here and there to, uh, to look at in this. Seems to be a lot going on. I do have to say a thing goro got done dirty again i'm waiting for them to tell me anything interesting about goro i'm just being honest with you guys i get it he's a good boy i'm not saying he's not a good boy but who the fuck are you dude you just hang out with kokomi and that's your personality uh, it's it's just annoying that it's like yeah he's a trusted soldier guy and he's with kokomi Give me a little more about this dude. I don't care if he's a four star. I want to know more about him. I, I hope there's more to him in the actual game because literally half the things he said in his little moment at the beginning, like I saw him and I felt excited. I was like, oh man, wow. We're actually going to learn a little bit more about Goro. We saw the same shit from his character demo. And then his little quote, it's its nothing. It's a trusted general who will guide his loyal men uh, into any battle. And that's it. And I'm worried that there isn't anything because I read the majority of the comments on my videos. And when people came to defend Goro last time, they still had nothing to say other than he's a good boy. Great, I'm glad he's a good boy. But a good boy with nothing else going on is a boring character. So I really hope he has some quirks. I hope that you get to learn more about his actual personality when it when it comes to like maybe story event missions and hangouts with him, if if those are a thing, you know. Because uh, yeah, like a dog boy, he's he's loyal. I, uh, like and and if that's all he has, it's not gripping me and I want to be gripped. I was waiting to see him again in something and I can't tell you how disappointed I am. Once again, no problem with his design. He looks great and I'm, I'm glad he's a good boy, but yeah, you gotta be more than a good boy. There's gotta be something else. I'm gonna watch his bit again just to see if I can get something from it. So don't say I'm not trying.
Yeah. He had like 36 seconds and most of it was the same. The only thing different was the enemy that he was fighting. I don't know. I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and sure, maybe they dropped the ball in the, the last stuff that we've seen with Goro. Maybe he'll be a good boy and he'll retrieve that ball and come back with a little something more than just, I am a soldier. Anyway, moving on to some of the other stuff, we have Ito here, and it looks like he's taking care of an Oni problem. I'm not sure why, but he seems to be within this shrine-like place that is possibly possessed by another Oni, or it's, it's living in this area. And then we have him here kind of just going through all these enemies in this place. So it's guarded at the very least. I'm wondering if Ito was lured there and it was a trap. So, okay, yeah. I mean, normally we see Arataki Ito with his gang or making references to his gang, but here he seems by himself. So, huh, I wonder if what he's getting himself involved with is a very personal quest of some kind, or did he just get like trapped or, or roped into something and he's just dealing with it his way. But because he's a gang leader and gangs normally like fight over territory and stuff, maybe there's this weird like uh, Oni thing about him as well where they also fight over territory. So maybe Ito went to a place that he was familiar with, realized this new Oni's in the area, took that from him and he's just there to reclaim it. So maybe that has something to do with, with anything that is happening in that portion. This next part's pretty cool. You have Eula and Amber, and they're just hanging out, and they're they're making a snowman. Uh, but then you have Albedo here, you know, sounding all smart and kind of also being a little vague as well. I like that Amber and Eula have a connection that they're friends. This is, I believe, the second time we've actually seen them just kind of hanging out at the end of Eula's character demo. Amber showed up, so I kind of I kind of like that little just like snip it into like their their lives. Albedo was working on something and he was essentially robbed that someone came through and uh, messed up his stuff and took his notes. So I thought about this after the recording and I believe Eula actually took the notes from Albedo because she was suspicious of something that he was doing. This would explain why she seems as though she is hiding something when others are asking if she's okay. And in regards to her question later towards Albedo, when she is asking him, what are you doing, essentially? So yeah, there's a little mistrust in the party, and things get a little heated, I guess. I still believe Albedo is probably up to something too, but Eula is just suspicious of him. Things get wacky. All right, back to the video. But then this, where a lot of people were watching, it's a little, it's a little intense. Albedo. What the devil do you think you were doing? Okay. So that little bit right there, you have Eula questioning Albedo. Throughout all these things that I've been seeing with Albedo involved, He's been a very interesting character. I know he is a homunculus uh, due to the comments. He essentially grew up with Klee. So they treat each other as though they are family, although it's not by blood, technically. Uh, they still have some kind of bond. And he grew up to be incredibly smart and a gift to actually create things. Um, he's an alchemist, he's a thinker. People refer to him as a genius, however, I also had a suspicion in his character teaser that he could be quite harmful as well because although he's focused when he cares about something, when he moves on to another thing, that in itself can become chaotic with the sort of abilities that he has. I don't necessarily know what he's up to, but I feel like Albedo is someone who researches and does experiments for the sake of progress. And that is sort of a gray area. Here, it seems that maybe he gets a little out of hand and he goes to greater lengths because he's very passionate about something in this location due to the mysteries that are there. And that causes a little bit of 
a rift between the group because it looks like we're kind of going against Albedo in the end there. Eula's questioning him. You have Bennett running in and you got these other characters and they're, they're standing apart, facing each other. So that was either a clever way of editing to trick people who are trying to look to find out what exactly is happening in this scene. That could be something else causing them to split apart, you know, from each other and face each other. Maybe something above them struck down and they had to jump away and he just happened to be on the other side of it. So it could just be clever editing with that. Or there is actually somewhat of a showdown between you and Albedo here because something is conflicting. Something has come to the surface and Albedo cannot be 100% trusted because he lost his way. Perhaps at the end of this, when you, after you fight him or whatever that is, maybe he's, he's subdued or he calms down or, or changes his line of thinking and he's no longer a threat or loses interest and he stops fighting for whatever he's fighting for. Who knows? Um, maybe it's something like that, but it could possibly be a warning letting you know that, hey, this Albedo guy, you're like, you guys are cool as long as he wants to be. I don't think he's a bad guy. I just think that he does what he wants and he sees things through as long as he's interested in them. And you can tell him to stop all you want, but it's really difficult to correct someone who thinks that they're right. I'm really interested in this segment here. This looks like it could be a lot of fun to kind of solve this mystery and figure out what the heck's going on with Albedo. But anyway, I'll leave that there for now. Rebuild the Jade Chamber? That's a huge project. The Jade Chamber belongs in the sky amongst the clouds. When I first set foot in the Jade Chamber, I stood at the edge of the platform and looked down upon Liyua Harbor far below. However, it is not only out of consideration for myself that I have built the Jade Chamber anew at this time. I hope the Jade Chamber will always float in the skies above Liyua Harbor, bearing witness to the prosperity and peace of the human world. Deep down inside, I wish I could slow down time. I feel very fortunate to be right here, enjoying the fireworks, and enjoying the view of Liyue Harbor.
it came to it, I could always destroy another Jade Chain. Guys, I'm having a hard time. I'm trying to scroll through this and I keep clicking on Shen Ha's chesticles. It's the best problem to have. We got the squad. We got Shen Ha. We got Ganyu, my beloved. And we got Zhao chilling. Yeah, so it seems like this Jade Chamber floats above Liyue and um, people people love it. And it's a, it's a big symbol. However, it seems that it's connected to the things that are happening later on and it turns out to be not such a good thing or at least maybe it's not used in a good way and then we have lines from i think beto saying that hey i've done i've destroyed a jade chamber before i'll do it again so it sounds like maybe this thing is connected to some monsters power the creepy voice we hear throughout the second half of the trailer probably belongs to uh, this monster thing, which is most likely, in my it opinion, came to it, I could always destroy another JJ. This sea monster thing. Yeah, I'm actually not sure if it's Shenha talking or if it's Beido, but they said fleet and I'm thinking of a fleet of ships and I'm thinking of pirate ships because Beido's a pirate. But yeah, this creepy voice that we hear throughout the second half of this trailer I think belongs to this sea monster. It's probably got some crazy legendary status and all that stuff, but I don't know if it's an actual god or not. Uh, seems to be a big threat though. I mean, it kind of kind of Kamehameha the freaking traveler into a wall. So that happened. Also, by the way, the voice that they used here for this monster or whatever entity is speaking, that was good. That was really good. Let me hear some bits of it again. Good. Bravo. That was good. You could tell that there are some effects on it, but naturally there's also this grumbliness. There's this gravel to the tone and everything, he, how he starts his sentences and his words. Everything sounds like it fucking hurts. And then it ends kind of slithering off every like his phrases just kind of go and i like kind of make this weird um like trailing off sound almost like a demonic lisp in a way which actually works because as we see later it is a giant serpent so you'd think that there would be some hisses and things uh, incorporated into uh, the words that it speaks. Uh, is this the same tree as we saw before? Hmm, maybe. The leaves look different though, maybe not, but it's lit up the same way. Hmm, they sure do like their trees and caves being all mysterious like I see. Like this here, we have Yunjin and she's being asked a question by some, some kid and uh, names the opera that she'll be performing, The Divine Damsel of Devastation. And she says, it's about a person becoming a hero. And then it switches to Shen Ha saying, well, perhaps that little girl's not as brave as the opera makes her out to be. Which I love that connection so much. Yunjin performing an opera that's about Shen Ha, or so I imagine, right? Either that or Shen Ha is comparing herself to the character in that story and speaking from experience, saying that like, yeah, that girl might not have be as brave. Like this story's making them seem like a bigger deal than they are, uh, which is cool. It's, it's humbling. Shen Ha is a really interesting character. I'd like to learn more about Shen Ha. The other thing that I really like about her design, other than just like, you know, damn, to me, even though I know very little, just it says so much already. Shen Ha, another character with a traumatic event in their backstory, referred to as a cursed child. But now she's like a competent warrior of sorts, despite having that darkness. And I feel like just how she's designed physically portrays that a bit. It's like the lighter bits are more flowy. Her sleeves flow, her her cloth chest piece flows, her, her hair flows, right? 
And then you have the dark bodysuit, which is tight. It's constricting. It doesn't leave, unfortunately. And then you have these red ties and tassels, which restrain yet control. They're red. It's very important. They stand out. I don't know if anything I said about Shenha's design actually means that, but from the tiny bit that I do know, that's what I can connect it to. And I think that we are able to see a bit of these characters just on their look alone. Just good character design. Uh, all right, all right. I keep clicking on her boobs. Best problem to have. All of Inkanomiya is engulfed in a darkness that cannot be dispelled. There have also been reports of monsters, the likes of which no one has ever seen before. Strange monsters? And an all-engulfing darkness? So you're here to help resolve this, hmm? Huh? You're joining forces with them. I would say this is a nice surprise, but it's really not that surprising. Enkanomiya is exceedingly dangerous right now. I was hoping I have the chance. This tower seems to hear my wishes. as I please. Something seems wrong with A. During my absence, I place everything in Miko's hands. But, but this means that... I'm placing my god in your capable hands. Please, bring her back. You wish to make yourself my enemy? I am the everlasting lord, the guardian of eternity. So this introduces Enkonomia, which I think I recognize that name from a Maxor video. It's like an underground place, right? Isn't it like a, almost like an Atlantis? The Symphony of Mischievous Teasing. Yeah, I'm down. Especially if she'd be looking at me like that. I'm always watching. No comment. And it looks like Raiden's going to sort some stuff out. This looks similar to the scene that we saw in an earlier video in her teaser. And this just feels familiar to that area. So maybe she went to some other dimension or maybe she's within her own mind right now. Miko is asking you to go retrieve her because she's been gone for too long, I guess. Or maybe she can tell that she's in trouble. And then we got some, we got some stuff going on here. Raiden all of a sudden being like, you're going to make yourself my enemy. There's a few things this could be here. First of all, this looks crazy. This looks like a crazy fight. She badass. And this looks like it's an ultimate form, probably. I understand that Raiden had a sister who was 
the original Archon, I think. However, I also thought I, I saw something about how... Is Raiden actually a god? Or is she just the vessel for a god? This is crazy. We got the eye thing again and just an arm straight up coming out with the sword. And Oh boy. So my guess is A versus Raiden. It doesn't go so well. They fuse into this thing and then you got to fight that and get her back. And that's what I think. Wow, it's so beautiful here. So many things I've never seen before. So happy. It hurts. Aren't you two even a little curious about what interesting things you might see at the festival? A signed first edition is going to become quite the collectible. I've got to get my hands on a copy. I've been here since last night so I could buy a figurine. Numero Uno Ito challenge you to an all out, no holds barred, anything goes duel. Ah. <laughs> it fails to fulfill the most crucial elements inspiration. <laughs> In that case, we'll need to order more dishes. Greetings. Ayaka has mentioned you on numerous occasions. Delighted to make your acquaintance. I am head of the Kamisato clan, Kamisato Hayato. Cascade! Mind the deluge. Everything's in place and they've taken the bait. Now to start reeling them in. If my suspicions regarding the portal network are correct, then the fact that there is a portal leading here tells us that the Abyss Order has their eyes on this location. As the Heli Trolls go in, they never emerge again. Everyone's driving themselves crazy worrying about it. Maybe whatever's going on in the chasm really is connected to the Abyss Order. Than one kind of strange power exists here, that it's highly likely that even as we speak, the Abyss Order is watching our every move. Huh? What's this? Conversation's over. Brace yourselves. And like that what a cliffhanger what the heck first of all that was a really cool environment there talking about the abyss order showing this giant chasm and then you have this upside down floating city and then crazy stuff happens and i'm like well, i want to know about the crazy stuff the hill of trolls are up are up to something or they're being controlled maybe they're being turned into something it, they look they have this dark matter floating around them i don't know if that's a normal thing it doesn't look like a normal thing but they're talking about an abyss order I don't know what that is. Um, I feel like it's been a bit since we've heard about the Fatui. Maybe that's some kind of sect of the Fatui, or maybe it's something completely different. Maybe it could be something much older. We have Ayato showing up, you know, we got our perfect uh, noble pretty boy here, you know, doing his thing, being cool and stuff. Good to see him. Venti here getting cronk. Good on you, Venti. Um, yeah, but this looks like another little festival thing. I mean, Klee's here. She's probably going to blow stuff up. I wonder why Ido is going to challenge Toma, of all people. Toma probably said something kind of smart that made Ito go, what? Possibly. Albedo's here, so we know that we don't kill him. That's cool. But it looks like he's suffering from art block, which, in my opinion, could be worse than death. But yeah, this trailer in general seemed to be pretty, pretty lighthearted, except for that ending mystery, which, by the way, they do a really good job in these. 
at making you guess like what the heck is that about what's going on i want to know i want to see what's in there they definitely have good setup i'm really surprised to see just the amount of content that is in this game however watching these uh sometimes i feel like it's a little hard to tell what is just an event in the game that was temporary that's no longer there versus something that i can actually still do for example this festival thing there's no doubt in my mind that i probably can't do this anymore that this was a there was a time limit on this probably um which is unfortunate but i'm sure there will be other festivals uh in the game so that's still cool that i'll get to experience maybe some of them someday that'd be nice uh however i feel like this is too big of a thing to just have it there temporarily only to remove it like it seems like a whole area and i don't think they would introduce this whole area only for a little bit just to remove it like there could be some important story stuff happening or at least something that could lead into something else story-wise I don't remember hearing anything about an Abyss Order before this. So I wonder if this is something that's been around in the game. What the heck they're about? Was it just introduced now? I don't know. My memory could just be failing me. Maybe I heard about the Abyss Order before. My father, he's thinking of stepping down from the Tianshu position. I first met Yelan when she was very young. Even back then, she was extremely tough, and she kept her cards close to her chest. The day the chasm was unsealed, I put in a request to be transferred here, so I could finally learn the truth of what happened back then. Everything is chaotic here. If you stay here too long, this space may well devour you. Does that mean even Xiao can't sense our presence here? Something seems to have been activated inside the Fantastic Compass. I fear that this problem underground is bigger than we thought. Just focus on taking care of yourselves. I'll figure out the rest. Gotcha! Busted! Here comes the catch! Maybe I should make better use of my time. Our bond is strong! Stand with me! Lightning purified! No! It's still alive! Why would you become like this? No way! Was that who I think it was? Something's not right. <coughs> Something's wrong with this domain. Leave now! Get out of there! I lured you here to this underground space because I found your weakness. Die here with me! Okay, so I really like this one too. Okay, first off, I have to say, uh, sorry, I've been pronouncing these names horrible, and I'm probably still going to do that. Um, but Xiao, SH for an X, my bad. I feel like I knew that and I completely forgot. And Yelon? I said Yelon. I keep saying Yelon, I think. But it's Yelon. Yelon, Xiao. Okay. I'm trying. This was awesome. We have Yelon, which is, I I mean, I mean, it's, 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 she's so cool. And then we have Shinobu here, which is nice. But Jack of all trades, deputy of the Oni. I remember talking about how I like that. Uh, mender of tribulations. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she's cool. I also liked her, her weapon thing, which I don't think I really noticed before. It's a chain blade. She's got like the Soul Calibur Ivy Blade going on here, but like a thousand times cooler. They go to this crazy place. They go through this uh, this portal. They say something's not right. That something's wrong with it. We see the sister here, and I just want to watch this for a second again. 
Leave now. Get out of there. That's super creepy. Just like that blank stare and the flickering. And I think the eyes like stutter a little bit. And then it's revealed that I don't know why, but this mysterious being, this whatever, whatever this dude's all about. I lured you here using your weaknesses and now you'll die here. What a dick move. But it does seem like Xiao was the first one to enter this place and we went in after him. And I think this is connected to Xiao in some way. Uh, these eyes seem very familiar. These almost look like the eyes on his mask. Maybe I'm tripping, but I think I've seen some imagery before with those eyes related to uh, Xiao. Huh. But yeah, it's definitely got to be about him because you have you have Yilan in the middle because she's like the showcase five star character for this version or whatever. But you got you got your big portrait of Xiao over here. So this story is definitely related to him this time, which is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, I could say the obvious things. She's too smooth. Every time I see them on screen just ticks off all the boxes of what I think makes an interesting character. I don't know. I got to keep on going. I can't wait to dissect more about Yolan in the future because just uh, holy crap. I'm I just I, I, I can't. I just I can't. I can't deal right now. Have you ever met someone by the name of Kaedahara Kazuha? He was called away earlier by some people from the Tenryo Commission. They said they had something important to discuss with him. Since the Vision Hunt decree has been repealed, I no longer have any grounds to officially arrest him. Then again, I guess something very interesting is about to happen. That's it. I'm taking this case over. Yeah! Uh, fracture! Can't fool me! I touched the hilt for the first time. It's as if I was transported to a strange dimension. Oh, faithful retainers, this is the blessed paradise that one has been searching for. Here is where we shall witness the culmination of all things. I, who command the darkness, shall lead you to yonder gate of dreams. to the princessin who has led us here to this sacred place my sincere gratitude to you for inviting me to join you on this trip your highness look at me a genius astrologist forced into a juvenile role-playing game lady magistus are you embarrassed stop calling me that weird name lady magic what <laughs> oh, excellent most excellent Official? That's enough! Come on, just play along! It's at the end of these version trailers, it's always some kind of summer event, which, which makes sense, I guess, right? And unfortunately, this one is official based, and I missed it. <laughs> um. It seems like they kind of go on some maybe imaginary adventure. I I don't I don't even fully know, but it seems like officials in control. It's they're doing some kind of game or or role play or whatever and she's in charge of the whole thing and uh the this crew that we have going along for it is just kind of like oh my god you know like what are we wrapped up into the style change it's very like cut out here uh which i love it's very cool and the the freaking circus music you have in the background is just selling on how loony this is this is going to be or this was i hope it was fun i mean i i honestly think fischl is a very interesting character uh maybe i'm biased because she was one of the only characters i ever pulled and got 
uh, that I remember. So it's cool just to have this this random group of characters being sent on this fantastical official mind game, the ultimate role player. Uh, on another note, we got some cool stuff. We got Heizo and uh, yeah, doing his detective things and they bring up Kazuha. It seems that Kazuha is in some trouble and Heizo sort of wants to ignore it, but at the same time, he doesn't have to. He could, he could do it. Uh, I liked them showcasing his move set and stuff. Kazuha here looks like he's in trouble though. He got transported to another dimension. What's that about? Is this the Raiden's sword? It looks a little different, but maybe it's just because I didn't get a closer look of it. Maybe this is like more of like it's pure form or something. But yeah, Kazuha is like in trouble. You probably have to go after him. But yeah, I like this one with how they intertwine these characters. Kazuha and Heizo, how, how they might be connected. It goes back to uh, Kazuha of like messing with this blade that he probably shouldn't be. And he gets sent to another dimension. I, I they're, they're so good at setting up these different quests. And then we have the lighthearted official stuff. I'm a fan of role playing games. Fischl just kind of like brought everyone to this other location to essentially role play and LARP with these guys. I, that's that's just funny. That's that's hilarious. I love that. I don't think this is an event that I'd be able to partake in today. So maybe if there are any uh, cutscenes or gameplay of this, I'll have to look that up uh, separately and, and see what that's about because that looks like fun. And if I am still able to do it for some reason, then awesome. I'm all about like the serious messages and like the, the hidden things that are in these trailers and character demos and things that I watch, but you gotta love the silly stuff too, right? Sometimes the silly stuff just hits in a different way. And uh, for some reason, this one just, I don't know. I would look forward to seeing how these characters deal with each other in a room in this ridiculous situation and seeing how that unfolds. Good stuff. I mean, these were all a lot of fun. Well, guys, those were the version two trailers and I had a lot of fun watching them. Yeah, I know I nitpicked here and there about some things, but overall, all these were great and they continue to surprise me every time. There's just so much stuff in them and like just things being introduced and characters being explored and these events relationships all sorts of stuff honestly i am impressed every time and in the next part i'll be doing the version threes and then at that point i'll be caught up there's things that i think i can expand on but i'm gonna have to hold off for now and maybe i'll go into more depth in some future videos well that's it for me but before i go there's something i should mention i have membership tiers now Woo! Next to the subscribe button, there is a join button. Click that join button, you can see the three tiers I offer. For the apprentice tier, you can see my videos early. For the scholar tier, you can see exclusive content. And for the professor tier, you get exclusive monthly streams with me, where we can talk and hang out and just have a good time. So if you are financially able and interested, check those out. I would appreciate it. If not, totally cool. I'm not changing how I do things. It's just more. With that said, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. If you made it this far in the video, then please, in the comment section down below, leave the word thunder. And that way I will know that you are indeed a real one. Shine on, you crazy diamonds. Later. Booba! All right, I'm back.